Great Big C's Alan Doyle and Sean McCann were both at the Astral Studios in Dawson Creek before their show Friday at the Encana Event Center. The third member of the group, Bob Hallett, couldn't make it, but he did have a creative excuse. Here with two of the three members of... Yes, the of best two. The best two. The best two, really, yeah. Well, I don't know, because every time I've seen you guys, you say you feel sorry for other bands that don't have a Bob. True. Bob Hallett's... But the thing about... Bob, Bob only course, comes out at night. He only is nocturnal, first of all, mm -hmm. and uh, he spends uh, most of the daytime covered in shrouds, hanging upside down. Hanging upside down. The cryogenic chamber is not really accurate, but it is a cylinder of types that he lives in, and where he practices Celtic instruments. Well, he, that's that's all he seems to do. He plays just about every instrument known, from what I've seen. But uh, so, what uh, what are your initial thoughts of of Sea Peace region? We've never, never been here. Peace soup. <laughs> we got here uh, so, a few hours ago and we walked around town a bunch and uh, I went to a gym over there and um, I was very thrilled to uh, see the, the mile zero of the Alaskan Highway because in St. John's we're sort of mile zero of the Canadian Highway. So we kind of have a kinship there and I learned that George... We're the end of the highway. We think we're the beginning. I know, oh, but we're actually <laughs> I thought we were the end. Uh, it just depends on where you start. Yeah. And... Uh, I learned that George Dawson is the man who uh, Dawson Creek is named after. And I learned that um, we were driving. I woke up early this morning uh, and sort of as the sun was rising and you look out over, you know, the flat kind of plains and we're not used to that kind of landscape where we're from. And I looked out and Bob, we're standing in the back of the bus, you know, sort of the window up and the, it was beautiful. I mean, over this white, you know, horizon, there was this, you know, yoke of sun rising up, and I said, Batman, it's wild, but what, what body of water is that? Is that like the, is that, what, are, we, are we on the Georgian Bay or something? Where are we, like, what, what lake is that? And Bob goes, it's not a body of water, man. I'm like, what? He said, that's a field. And I was like, that, all of that is one big plane? He's like, yeah, wow, it's pretty wild. It looks like, it looks like an ocean to me sometimes when it's covered. So obviously a lot of the, the places you play in Canada, the, the crowd has, has probably never been to Newfoundland, but to embrace what yeah. you guys bring from there. I mean, what does it sort of say? To what, what's the opinion? I mean, from my point of view, you always seem like the guys who you could go grab a beer with, and with what a lot of the Canadians who think you guys are, are a good act to follow. I'm a little flattered by that. Well, there you go. So, I mean, what, what does it say that when you can go wherever you go in Canada, you know, you get an enthusiastic crowd who seems to like what, what Newfoundland you bring to uh, to them? Well, Newfoundland is the oldest. Well, we were a country until very recently. We're the last to join. And, uh, I mean, we uh, benefited from our isolation in the sense that we all this very unique music came to us and, and was unaffected by American radio until much later. And, and we were forced to entertain ourselves. And that's where all these great songs came from. And we're, Newfoundland is uh, 500 years old or 500 plus now. And uh, the songs that we pass around and that we play are that old. And... Uh, and they're still enjoyable and still strong. So I think we were we benefited from that kind of history and cultural heritage. And I think people really think that it's exotic and different, and it is. It's distinct. I think if there's a distinct culture in Canada outside of Quebec, it's it's Newfoundland. What's it like in the states? Do they just sort of politely applaud, or do they know what's going no, on? No, they they love it. They're even probably even more enthusiastic because they're not used to us. They're we're still yeah. a newer commodity down there, and in, in a sense, the greater distance makes it even. More exotic and more different because they don't even know where. Honestly, Newfoundland or Americans, most Americans don't even know where Newfoundland is. The Canada to them is Toronto and probably Montreal. That's it. So geographically, they they think we're part of Europe or something. It's really it's true. So it's been educational down there, but they respond in a in a very excited way. They're th the same as Canadians do, really. But um, you know, it's a big it's a big shock to their systems. I would say to see accordions and fiddles coming out of so. It's different. And uh, I don't know if it's just me, but this latest album, it seems different in, in some way. I know there's a lot of collaboration uh, with other artists. Was that their influence that brought in this different sound that maybe I'm just imagining? Or did you guys purposely go out and do this album? Let's try to yeah. do something different. It's a great thrill by to be able to sort of let other people in your band for a week, you know, and, and whether you do it when you're recording or most of the stuff we did in that regard was we had a, some friends of ours write a bunch of songs with us. And like a friend of ours named Paul Lamb joined Sean and a song called Good People. And then 
and then Paul, and along with a lady named Jean O'Brien and, and Joel Plaskett, who you might know, Jeremy Fisher, who you might know, we all gathered in the west, western part of Newfoundland for a five-day kind of songwriting retreat. Those guys, along with myself, John and Bob. And that was, of all the, the sort of little blocks and periods of time that we set aside to make this record, that was easily the most fun. And now, you've remember. also had some time apart. You came out with your own solo, solo album. I know Bob has a book. You were in a, a, a small budget film, small, budget, uh, indie, small indie art house movie. Yeah, Robin Hood, Robin Hood with yeah. a guy named Russell Crowe, who I know young, helped helped write a song on this a, one. A young and upcoming director named Ridley Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what's it like when when you guys go your separate ways and then come back together again? Oh, everybody, the, the great big sea gigs are the most fun things we all do in our professional lives. You know, I don't think it'll ever be topped. And the, uh, you know, it's just it's so much fun to be able to. To, to go off and do those other things and, and to, to come back and do the fold and, and to have like a band that knows 50 songs like without rehearsing you know and can play them and there's a crowd that looks to listen to it, you know it's quite a privilege really i mean what you guys are still relatively young what where, where do you go now like what's what's else to do <laughs> how many songs are there in newfoundland history that you can put into an album oh be more books and solo records and movies i think is what's gonna what you'll see more of and uh and hopefully more tours from Great Big Sea, you know. Whatever else we can get into. Maybe some carpentry work. I'm thinking about carpentry. Maybe some fishing. Cro great, great Big Croquet. Fishing with Great Big Sea. Um, you know what's being... Catch a buzz with Great Big Sea. <laughs> Hooks and folks. The, um, it's funny being a traditional band from a place where music seems endless, you know, like, and, like indigenous music seems endless. You know, that kind of, you know, that crop of material in Newfoundland is certainly a lot harder to access than it was for us, like, 15 years ago, because we've kind of already done the top 50 of Newfoundland folk songs, you know. But there's still lots there. They're harder to find. And here's the joy of the, the best news of all. People are still writing them. People are still doing, making songs that eventually will become into, you know, that will make their way into the, into the folk canon, you know. So, I mean, if you're a singer for a living and you live in a place like that, that's quite, quite a stroke of good luck, you know, so you'll always have something to sing about. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm, I'm looking forward to it tonight. Gavin Day for Around the Peace in Dawson Creek. Uh -huh.